Hi, I'm Austin Griffith, and today I'm going to do a tutorial on how to build uh, a DAP using meta transactions. So, to state the problem, basically, when you get in to use any kind of decentralized application, there's usually a huge barrier to entry right at the point where you need to sign up for MetaMask or get, you know, you basically see the seed phrase up front before you get to see any of the app. And so, this is going to kind of um, try to set up a situation for a user where they get to see the app, they get to use the app, they get to provide value within the app, and then finally after after that kind of narrative has built up behind some kind of throwaway account, we can start to educate them on seed phrases and blockchain and wallets and, and good practices. So, so basically the trick is you kind of get them into the app first and then work them out uh, as, as they uh, get more acquainted with it. So uh, we're just going to um, kind of build step by step a dApp and then we're going to figure out how to kind of put a meta transaction layer on top of it. This, this will be the uh, second part of my workshop in Prague. I think it's on October 31st at like 3.30 p.m. or so. Uh, I'll have more information about that a little later. But uh, the first thing, if, you, if you're not familiar with Clevis or Dapparatus, uh, check out the Build Guild 0x0 Zero Zero and 0x1. Zero There's links uh, right at the top of the article you're probably watching this video in. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to create, uh, with Clevis and Dapparatus, a dap called Nunce Upon a Time. So it'll be something where like people can kind of build a collaborative story. So uh, the first step is to fire up a project with the project name called Nuts Upon a Time. Normally with Clevis, you can just do a Clevis init. But what I, what I like to do with this, uh, especially for a workshop where I'm going to have a lot of people, is to have a Docker container. So sometimes when their environment's not quite the same as mine, it, there, there will be problems with Clevis. But with Docker, you can kind of just fire up the container and it works. So I fired up the container over here. It takes like five to 10 minutes to fire up. So uh, you kind of start it and go somewhere else. And then uh, you'll, you'll have a, a React app that comes uh, up with it and uh, all your Clevis files there ready to go. So we can just kind of dive in and look at uh, the... There's our app. Basically, uh, you when you start up Clevis, you just get a, a shell of an app. And um, let's see how it looks. Yeah, so that's basically it. Maybe we could even inspect the console and check out. Yeah, so really not a whole lot is going on yet. It's just kind of just a MetaMask component and an empty uh, shell of a React app. And uh, we could change that here in a little bit. So... Um, Let's just follow along with this article. We connect it to the local host. Okay, so the first step is we're going to create a contract called Stories. And then um, we'll get in here and edit this contract, and it's going to be super simple. So this Stories contract is just going to have a write function that takes in a string. And then that string will be emitted as an event. So it's a stateless contract that emits events. And it just says, you know, like this sender sent out this line. So it's really, really simple. It's just kind of like broadcasting events. So we'll save that and we'll compile it with Clevis. Uh, again, if you haven't used Clevis or Dapparatus, you should probably jump, uh, follow this link into uh, the intro. Uh, looks like it compiled fine. All right, let's go ahead and deploy it. And then we'll publish it into the app. Oh, did something wrong there. There we go. Publish it into the app. Okay, so now we can start editing. There we go. So we published our contract uh, on Ganache, and now we can start editing our app. So that would be in source app.js. The first thing it has it has us do is just get that contract loader ready to go. So now uh, our contract is being loaded in. We could go uh, check out the console log, and if we see in here, yep, so contracts are ready. There's the stories contract. There's a write function that takes in a string. Uh, what exactly what you would expect? Um, 
then the next thing we'll bring in is the transactions object and uh, that will give us that little loader in the bottom right that shows uh, the blocks as they load but it also will show our transactions as we make them and they kind of link to either scan so you can see like a little progress bar and and kind of be able to click in and find out more about it okay and then it looks like we get a little ui going and i'm just going to kind of copy and paste this uh let's see just right there i think oh whoops it'll be this whole thing so basically we have this if contracts check and and that's just checking to see if the contracts have been loaded in uh yikes what have i done making a mess There we go. Okay, so basically if the contracts are loaded, we want to display this UI and we should see the UI show up there. There we go. Very, very, very simple. Nonce upon a time. And then you can kind of write your story in here. So let's see, the input is tracked by this write text object in the state. And then there's a write button, but there's no, so if I click that, it's not gonna do anything yet. So we need to wire that up. And to do that, we'll pass in this. So, so the transactions object, as you know, if you've used Clevis and Apparatus, it, it kind of abstra abstracts away a lot of the um, heavy lifting of making a transaction on chain and just gives you this nice TX function that then calls back with the receipt when the transaction is finished. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk to the stories contract and we're going to call the write function and we're going to pass in this write text that was uh, part of our state. And when it finishes, we're going to clear the write text. Very, very, very simple UI here, uh, just getting started. And what this is alluding to is if we were to type something in and hit write, it's going to tell us we have insufficient funds. Okay, so let's go ahead and reject that. Um, Again, if you've used Clep's apparatus, you're going to know that you need to set yourself up with some funds, and you do that in the MetaMask component right there. And what you do is you put your address in there, and mine's already in here, but I wanted to show you. So it's in testclevis.js right in the MetaMask section. But now if we run Clevis test MetaMask, we uh, will get some fun showing up right over here. There we go, 0 0.01. Okay, so now we actually have some funds. We should be able to, once upon a time, there was a f frog named Willie. Now let's see if we can write to the chain, our event, confirm. And there goes the transaction and nothing happens. And nothing happens because we're not displaying anything yet because we're not tracking those events. And I think that's probably what we're going to hear about next. Got plenty of ETH, we submit the transaction. Exactly, yep, so we're not displaying anything, so we need to set up an event parser. And that is just uh, another component uh, in Dapparatus. And I'm going to copy and paste because it's provided for us here in the tutorial. Let's see. We want to copy and paste this in right, let's see, maybe like right here. We'll put it right in our UI. So, and we're also setting hide to false. This is kind of like for troubleshooting. It'll look gross, but it'll list off our events as they're fired. Eventually we'll hide, set them to true. So basically our contract is stories, our event name is right. And then anytime you get events, go ahead and push them into the state. But for now, we're, we're, we're not hiding it. So we should actually see those events listed. There we go. So there was that first event. There was a frog named Willie. Uh, you know, the sender was me. The line was that. And then the block number is there. So, so we're getting events and they're parsing now. But I'm guessing our next step will be to... Uh, clean those up. Yep, let's add some UI. Okay, so instead of let's go ahead and Let's go ahead and hide these. So if I say true this piece should disappear Cool, okay, and then uh, in a, above our UI Basically once we know that contracts are good what we want to do is just parse through all those events and uh, create 
a nice little display for each line and then we'll put the lines in probably right below Nonce Upon a Time. So it kind of fits with the UI. There we go. So Nonce Upon a Time, there was a frog named Willy and we could see that there's my little icon there that matches this icon. So cool. Uh, basically we're writing uh, a little uh, story on chain and it says, I think bonus points if you can supply multiple accounts. And I think uh, in my Clevis, I have two accounts. Hopefully that's this second account. Uh, let's go see. Yep, he has 0.1 ETH also. Uh, and he had a very special magical talent. Dot, 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 dot. Right. And confirm. Cool. Okay, so we're, we're writing our story on chain. There's multiple people. They're collaborating. Uh, but right now they're basically paying the gas, right? I think I say something like, sweet, our dap is build, our dap build is complete, let's shipple it. Okay, and then I say, not so fast, jabroni. Let's see what this looks like in Safari, right? So if I pull up Safari and we put in localhost 3000, what are we going to see? Ooh, ooh, gross. And that's that's the point here. Is like this, like like if you if someone is uh, on their phone and they're scrolling through their Twitter and you tweet out about your new DAP and they click in and they see this, they see this big gray nothing that says hard stop. You have to install MetaMask before you can do anything. This is basically like the worst UX we can provide, right? And and we'll see. Uh, Lots of dApps are are getting a lot better at this, and this this is awesome. Like this is where uh, this is where onboarding is really going to shine, is when we do a better job of bringing people in from Twitter and everything on our phones, and it, like it like that. This this experience right here needs to be way smoother, and a lot of people are figuring it out. Uh, so I I just want to help out with whatever I can, kind of uh, give some code examples and figure out what we can do best, right? And and I want Dapparatus to be something that a developer can just drop in and use and kind of solve some of this stuff. So let's see what we can do. Uh, basically, uh, we talk about yes, there's a hard stop with developers. Uh, the first thing we can do is basically integrate in Fura, right? Instead of instead of counting on MetaMask to be our link to the blockchain, we can actually just go talk to Infura, which means we can at least do reads from the chain. So the user can't like participate, but they can at least like see everything. And I think that's a great first step. Like let them at least see the content. And that's a, a pretty easy thing um, to integrate with Infura, but uh, Dapparatus will take care of that for you. So what we can do is in our code, uh, we are going to bring in a new component from Dapparatus called Dapparatus, and it's going to replace the, the MetaMask component. So what we'll do is we'll bring in this. So we're, we're just gonna replace MetaMask with Dapparatus. And Dapparatus just does a little bit better job um, handling these edge cases than the MetaMask component that I've previously created. And let's see, we need to do one more thing and we need to set up some kind of fallback Web3 provider. Basically, if it doesn't find an injected Web3, it's gonna fall back to something. So so eventually you'll put in like an Infura endpoint with, with your API key. But uh, in this case, we're just gonna talk to our local chain on 8545. And if I hit save, what do we see? Oh, look at, look at Safari. Look at that. Okay, but something else has happened here. Look at this. We actually have an ID, right? And so what that is, is it's creating for us, it's creating a an ephemeral key pair in, in memory. So let's just do like a new private window and try that again. Localhost 3000. Boom, look at that. It generated us a new, look at that's a cool blocky. It generated us a new account that uh, can see everything, right? So. So immediately, right when you join the app, not only do you get to see the content that's that's on chain and, and actually interact with the blockchain in terms of reading, it also creates an account for you, a key pair. And that key pair is just a normal Ethereum account, just like any other one. 
it can sign things and and uh, kind of operate. It just doesn't have any ETH, and that'll be the next trick that we focus on. But this thing is kind of a throwaway account, right? It's definitely not the most secure thing. It's something that's generated in memory. It lives in the browser. It could be lost. It could be stolen. So the the point is, there's like a trade-off you're making here, right? You're saying, okay, I'll, I'll have this kind of throwaway key pair first as I kind of get in and kind of learn things. But then as I provide value, maybe, maybe I'll, I'm more incentivized to sort of protect this thing and I can kind of sweep the account to a new one. So uh, let's see what's next. There we go. Okay, so when we visit from Safari, we get to see it. Okay. Now, this is when we start talking about meta transactions. So uh, a meta transaction is uh, similar to a normal Ethereum transaction. It's got like the call data and a, a destination contract, and then it is signed. But instead of that thing getting shipped to the Ethereum network, it's shipped to a relayer, and then that relayer submits it on chain and pays for the gas. So, so what happens is it's submitted to uh, what what's called like a a bouncer proxy or or a proxy contract or an identity contract, and that that contract is a special contract where it cryptographically proves that this this ephemeral key pair here signed that transaction. And, and it uses uh, cryptography just like uh, it's elliptic curve cryptography, same stuff that Ethereum uses for everything else, or I think so. I'm not an expert at any of that stuff. But basically it recover, it uses the EC recover function to prove that this key pair signed this call data. And then once it can prove that, then it can actually take that call data and put it into the call function in assembly and fire it off just like a normal Ethereum transaction. So basically the contract itself is making the real transaction, but you're using this meta transaction to sort of sign the intent to transact, right? Okay, so let's get into that. Oh, oh, we should probably talk about this too. So at first, when we kind of talk about how do we pay the gas for users, we think, well, like, we could just do a custodial account, right? Like we could control the private keys for them on our server and then they could basically tell us when they want to interact with something. But that ends up being a really bad solution. First of all, we're holding their private keys and that just throws all the decentralization and, and trustlessness out the window. But also uh, it, it's susceptible to a lot of like web 2.0 attacks. So this 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 other solution with this meta transaction solution where they they have the keys they hold the keys themselves the keys are kind of throwaway and we are making some uh, you know some decisions there about maybe you know it's it's only good enough for just a little bit and only good enough for certain situations but at least it gets them in here and they get to see the story right that's the important part like we want them to be able to see this and now we want them to be able to interact with it what we'd like is if they could write this and hit write. It won't go on chain. They don't have enough Ethereum to pay the gas. But what if they could just sign the call data that would normally go on chain and send it somewhere else? We'll pay the gas to get that call data to the contract, and the contract could execute the call data on their behalf, and then also kind of cryptographically prove that they signed it. So then, when when the contract broadcasts it, it can say that like this ephemeral account signed it. So uh, yeah, let's let's get into that. So so the trick is we're going to have to create ourselves a proxy contract. Now, uh, in this demo, I'm just kind of creating it myself. There, there's probably going to be a lot of different things uh, out in the ecosystem coming out in the next year where maybe there's, I mean, there's probably already a proxy contract that's exactly like this deployed somewhere that you can just interact with. Um, also the relayers, we're gonna build our own relayer here. Like I, I wanna make a kind of an end-to-end -end example uh, here in the code for anybody to use and then, and then demonstrate that at the, at the workshop. But I'm sure that uh, a relayer just like this exists somewhere else, right? Okay, so here is the contract, and let's go ahead and get that into the code. So here's our code. We'll go to the proxy contract, we'll paste that in. Okay, so um, there's a couple functions. There's the get hash function that takes in the destination, the value, and the data. The value is going to be zero. I probably could have taken that out too. Like I'm trying to simplify this as much as possible. If you've seen my other uh, meta transaction demos, there's a reward in here. I'm not even putting the reward in. I'm simplifying this and, and assuming that like this centralized server is incentivized to just pay the gas here, and we don't need to worry about the crypto economics of the whole situation. 
So uh, there's git hash, it'll just give you a hash of all the information uh, encoded, uh, a, uh, what is RLP encoded, and then there's the forward. This is actually the, the real function that does the forwarding. Uh, it gets the hash, it increments the nonce, so then we have replay protection. Uh, make sure the signer is correct, and then it executes the call. And the execute is this little piece here. I think I got it from Gnosis or Uport, or they got it from each other. I think maybe Uport got it from Gnosis, and I got it from Uport, something like that. But it's it's a very simple. It's just doing a call like you would a normal transaction, but it's passing in that call data. So so you sign this data that says I want to call this function with these arguments on this destination contract, and then it executes it on chain. So so if you were to go look at the destination contract, the message.sender is actually gonna be this contract. And that's why we need to send uh, emit, we need to emit an event within the proxy that says this this transaction happened. And then, then the front ends can say, oh, this was a proxied uh, event, right? And then we go back to the proxy and read their events. So, so it takes a little bit more work on the front end to figure out who did what. And then, you know, here's the cryptography here. You've probably seen this uh, quite a bit, but it's basically doing, uh, it's cutting up the signature into the RSV and then figuring out uh, who actually signed, doing, it does an EC recover to figure out who actually signed that transaction. So this is, this is the cryptographic magic here. All right, so that's basically the whole contract and that's ready to go. And let's go ahead and compile it. Oh, and there's a disclaimer there. This is not safe for production. There's no whitelisting system. Basically, anything anybody can run anything on this contract. Uh, I don't even know all of the implications of that, to be honest. But basically, anybody can run anything through this contract. So this contract can act on anyone's behalf, which probably isn't good. I, I mean, can they destroy it? I don't know. Whatever. I'm not going to worry about that. This is just kind of a proof of concept for someone to run a local setup that goes end to end doing meta transactions on behalf of the user. Okay, so now we know that every time someone, whoa, every time someone does a Clevis test full, they're going to have a stories contract and a proxies contract ready to go. We can see the proxy is all compiled and, and good to go. Okay, what's next? Okay, so now we need to build a relayer. And a relayer is just. Uh, in a lot of shops right now are just doing like this nice centralized relayer and by nice, I mean, not nice. Like it's not a good idea to have a centralized relayer in a decentralized world like web three, any point of centralization within web three is sort of frowned upon, but right now we're just kind of building a demo. This is, this is like a kind of a, uh, you know, the happy user story here where, uh, we just want to make it work first. But uh, it should be mentioned that with rewards, with crypto economics, with, with uh, the correct incentives in place, these meta transactions can go out to a peer-to-peer -peer layer and the peer-to-peer -peer layer can submit it on behalf and then be paid uh, for doing so. So, so there definitely is a peer-to-peer -peer relayer network in the works, but uh, for demonstration and for building purposes, we're just gonna have a centralized web server that uh, catches our transaction and submits it uh, for us. So let's just go ahead and grab that code. It's just like an, a little express server um, that has what, like a post, a TX post that takes in uh, the transaction, the body and the signature. We do a recover to make sure that the account is correct there. And then if the account is correct, we go ahead and uh, actually run a formal like Ethereum transaction. We get the hash and we there it is. So contracts method forward. So we actually push, push the content of that transaction, that meta transaction into the blockchain right there. Okay, so let's go ahead and create this relayer.js and paste this stuff in and save it. Cool. Uh, what else is there? Oh, oh, so there's also a get uh, transactions. Um, and, and we'll see this in uh, the transaction stuff. But when you look down here at the bottom right, you can see the blocks load. And normally when you have an account that's paying and it makes a transaction, that transaction shows up down there in the bottom right. 
well, for meta transactions, it'd be nice if Dapparatus basically displayed it exactly the same. And that's that's what this is for. Your your web server can have a get where Dapparatus can reach out to it and say, hey, are there any transactions for this user? And if there are, I want to display them even though they're just like meta transactions and they're from this ephemeral account, I still want to display them the same. The, the trick with Dapparatus is like, let's let them have this just standard way of building transactions. And then whether it's a normal transaction or a meta transaction, let's make them like look and seem the same to the end user and to the developer and we'll handle the magic on the back end. Okay, so let's see. I think we need to install some packages. Yeah, okay. And over here in your Docker container, you're going to need to install Express and Helmet and Cores. Um, that's just to have this relayer working correctly. And one other thing is this app is going to be listening on port 9999. And that is inside the Docker container. And if you're familiar with Docker, you have to expose ports. So uh, once this installs, we're also going to have to edit, um, yeah, the port stuff. So we're going to have to edit this run.sh. So Clevis creates a run.sh for you that's like any time. So, so this command right here is the exact same command we ran at the very beginning. And I ran it before I started the, the video because it takes so long. But basically, it sets up your Docker container and it initializes your project and gets like Ganache up and running and create React up and all this. But what we're going to need to do is add a dash p 99999, basically exposing this, this relayer port uh, on the container. So then when the web app goes to talk to localhost 999, it's, it's ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And oh, also. Um, within the relayer, it's looking at this deploy network. Uh, and the deploy network is just for uh, triggering different things on different networks. Actually, it's probably not even important here, but uh, I'm gonna add it in just so we have it. So I'm gonna do a echo 999. Normally it'd be like one for testnet and like three or one for mainnet and three for some of the other. But for now, we'll just echo 999 to deploy network. Okay, so we can fire it up with node relayer. And that's fine. It should come up, we should see that it works. But the problem is the those ports that port 999 is not exposed. Yeah, so it's up and running and it's working, but we can't get to it. Uh, if I go to localhost, one, two, three, four, we get nothing, right? And that's because the port's not exposed. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of the container. I'm assuming that's what we talked about here. Yeah, there's where we edit it. Yep. And so you just change your run to add this little exposed port there, right? And I can just do, oh, so cd into nonce upon a time. And I can just do a dot slash run now. And I think this should bring up our container, but with 999 open. And we'll do, now that we have the container up, we'll do a Clevis test full. That's going to compile both of our, not only our stories and our, like our DAP contract, but also our proxy contract. It'll compile all that stuff. It'll deploy it out to Ganache. It'll set up our MetaMask. It'll publish it to the Create React app. And then once that is all done, we'll fire up our relayer. And then hopefully we'll just have like straight up access to our relayer and our app and everything should be wired up fine. And we'll be able to kind of move over to the front end and start working on that. Go Clevis, go. There it went. So it deployed the proxy there. Now it's doing the MetaMask stuff. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so the next step, I'm just going to kind of assume all of this stuff is going to be working. We're going to move over to the app and we're going to figure out how to integrate this relayer network. And let's go ahead and fire up our relayer. Please, 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 please. Okay, and now I bet this works. There we go. Hello world. Okay, so our relayer, uh, and if I hit reload a bunch, we can see that it's, yep. Okay, so... Uh, we are working. Our relayer network is connected. Um, let's just leave it there. Okay, so let's go back. What do we need to do? How do we build this into Dapparatus? So you basically built the infrastructure out to run your meta transactions. You've got your, your proxy ready to go on chain. How do we wire up the front end to, to talk to that stuff? 
So uh, with Dapparatus, there is this meta TX object that we create. And I'll put that right up here. It's kind of with this default provider. We kind of keep it up top here. So, you know, you may have you may have a, a, a relayer that lives out behind some subdomain or just kind of some other DNS. Right now we're just going to do localhost 999. Also, you may use Infura for your uh, uh, RPC endpoint. Again, we're just going to use localhost. And then it just needs to know where your proxy contract is. So we're deploying ours along with this project. But a lot of times I'll just have an address in here. And I'll, I'll have a pre-built uh, pro bouncer proxy out live somewhere on the main net or whatever. Okay, but, but in this case, since we're going to try to do an encapsulated end-to-end -end demo, we're just going to load it from the current project. That's where it's going to get the address. But basically, this is just a contract address right here. Okay, so what else? Oh, and we need to add in MetaTX to our... Ooh, what element is that? To our Dapparatus element. Okay, so in Dapparatus, we need to... Where do I put it in there? Right after the config. Oh, come back here. So right after the config, I'm going to create, uh, I think it's meta tx object and pass in meta tx and we'll go ahead and hit save there. Let's see. Yep, that looks good. Okay, that looks good. Oh, and we need to create a meta contract. Oop, I should change that. That's not right because I could see a capitalized right there. But basically we say meta contract equals our proxy contract and we do that when the contracts are loaded. Uh, again, this source code will all be available. You can just go check it out. Um, also, it's kind of like copy and pasteable. But what this is doing is we're putting a hook right here is the on ready of the contract loader. So once Dapparatus loads up the contracts, it, it will uh, trigger this event. And so we can say our meta contract is, I think it's contracts.proxy. Let's go look at this one more time to make sure I got that right. Contracts.proxy meta contract. Okay, I think that's right. So we're just going to keep a state variable called meta contract. And then we're going to need to pass all that stuff into the transactions. So the transactions component is the guy that really handles all of this stuff. And that's right here. And I think we can just kind of paste this stuff in. So there we go. So our meta account would be the ephemeral account that got generated. The meta contract would be our proxy. Uh, the meta tx is just kind of the configuration we're also going to throw in the balance here so this is a little trick that if if this user even though you have injected web3 if this user comes in and uh tries to interact with the app and doesn't have any eth even though it's not an ephemeral account we're still going to want to do a meta transaction there right like if someone comes in with a perfectly good meta metamask account but doesn't have the ability to pay for the gas let's go ahead and pay the gas for them right it's still it's still something like worth it to us to pay the gas cool okay so let's see we should have everything in. Oh, and then there's this meta TX parts. This is different for kind of every DAP, so it's kind of exposed to the, the DAP developer, but these are the pieces of that hash. So if we go look at the proxy contract, you're going to have this git hash piece, this here, and that's the same thing that we have here. Uh, just all the parts uh, of that hash, the meta TX parts, right? So now I think we're about hooked up. Okay, at this point. Okay, so let's try um, once upon a time. Uh, there was a small village, dot, dot, dot. Okay, and we can write that and that should be just a normal transaction. Uh-oh, we're throwing an exception. I bet I did something wrong. Let's make sure I and attached to the right network and everything. Hmm. I wonder what I did wrong. Let's see, I feel like I may have forgotten a step here. Let's, uh, well, let's cancel any of these and let's make sure we're on the right network and let's go back to using this user. Um, there was a small village, dot, dot, dot. Let's see if this writes. No rejection, no rejection. Okay, so we're throwing 
that is not good. I wonder what's going on here. So we have, huh, I am missing something here. Let's go back. Let's see here. Transactions, meta transactions. Our relayer is up. We're talking to the new network. Hmm. Something is not quite right here. Maybe let's jump away from this network and then jump back to localhost. Hmm. There's, I mean, there's no, there's nothing that's even going to reject here. So I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, and it published. Hmm. Hmm. Let's see if it works over on this guy. Let's just try like the ephemeral account, right? Uh, inspect element. And go ahead and give me the console. There was a small village. Okay, so this is like the ephemeral account. Oh, okay, so something is wrong. I think I must have missed a step in building a piece of this because it looks like the nonce isn't right. Let's just walk, let's just walk through the steps again and make sure we have everything correct. Let's see here. So we have our proxy. We have our relayer. The relayer is out here. It's loading the transactions. We have port 99 exposed. Let's just let's just do a Clevis test full here. I think I'm, I'm almost sure I missed something in the front end somewhere. So we put that into apparatus. We've got our meta contract. Maybe that's not supposed to be. Let's go look at our code. So the meta contract that gets passed into the transactions object is there. And that is set up contracts.proxy. That's what we do there. And then in transactions, we bring in meta tx equals meta tx and we've got meta tx equals meta tx there uh boy this seems and then we fire up our relayer and that worked it's at point two it's on the right network Okay, it, it's working now. I don't, I think I just need to, sometimes you need to do a Clevis test full and redeploy everything. Okay. There was a small village. Okay, let's see if this is gonna work now. I'm not exactly sure what I was doing wrong there, but a redeployment brought us, brought us all back. Okay, so, uh, so that guy contributed. Now let's do this dude. Um, but it had a dark side, dot, dot, dot. Okay, so it's working. All right, now here, here's the big, so you can see the transactions going in there. What if we want to use, let's just go ahead and reload here. What if we want to use this ephemeral account, right? Um, there was an evil goat that lurked at night. Dot, 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 Okay, uh, here we go. Uh, right. Oh my gosh, it worked. Okay, so uh, we do have an issue though. So this little, it's it's kind of confusing between because these two icons look very similar, but they are not. Um, he was very hungry. Actually, let's not even send that from this account. Let's, let's, uh, Let's send that from like a new incognito window on localhost. 
So we should see a new private key. Oh, look at that. That's a cool one. He was very hungry and wanted to eat toes. Dot, 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 dot. Right? Okay, so see what's happening here? Basically, uh, we have this weird green one. It's not this one, but this weird green one, uh, this weird green icon. And that icon is actually the proxy account. So what's going on is basically the message.sender that the events are seeing is the proxy contract, not these ephemeral accounts. And this is something uh, that I mentioned earlier that basically the front end needs to do a better job of parsing this. So the front end needs to do one extra step, not just read its own events, but detect that there's this proxy that's coming through and go to that proxy and parse the proxy's events and then kind of line these events up and then figure out who really posted it. So I think that we will do that now that things are working. Okay, yes, there's a problem. The message.stories is the proxy contract. Uh, what we need to do is parse the forwarded events, right? So the proxy throws uh, events we look at the proxy, there's this emit forwarded, and I've kind of talked about that earlier, but basically it, every time that a transaction comes through the proxy and is executed, it, it throws some events too, so we need to parse those events also. And we can do that with a meta event loader, just, just an events component, just like we already have used in Dapparatus. We'll bring in another events, and we'll probably put it right here. Oh, wait, 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 we probably want it. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have this a meta events loader that goes and talks to the meta contract and it looks for the forwarded. So we just need to put the event loader probably right there. Okay, so now we're gonna be parsing the events of the proxy along with the events of the story. Yep, we got that. Okay, now there's a bunch of code, a wall of code right here, and we'll, uh, we'll unpack it here. But what this code is doing is, is that process of looking through the events. And I think what we do is replace this code here. Boop. Nope. That was not what we wanted to do. What is this code? This code... happens... Oh, right in here, I think. Boop. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so for each event that happens as a story, like each line of the story, we're going to then check to see if that event sender is equal to our proxy contract. That means like if, if it comes in and it's one of these two, it just knows it's fine. But if it's this guy here, we know that it's the, our proxy contract, so we need to do something a little different. And what that is, is we parse through each event and come up with whether or not we know the sender, and if we know the sender, then we add this like extra blocky right here that will just put a, a new blocky kind of over the top of this one that represents the ephemeral account. And I think what we'll do is put that in right here. Let's see how we did there. There we go, okay, cool. So, so now we can see actually who sent this, right? Okay, so here's the brown dude. He would sneak into your room at night and nibble, 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 dot, 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 right. And hopefully we see, there we go. So there's the brown dude uh, through the proxy sent this line, right? So there we go. That's, that's basically like someone can come in to the app. Let's see if we're about done. Someone can come in to the app and fire off events and we uh, can let them kind of get this uh, kind of narrative going behind um, their account. So then, then this is kind of where we can start talking about onboarding and talking about wallets and talking about best practices and education, right? We want them to first dive into the app. We want them to see, well, once upon a time, these people are writing this story about this evil goat. Boodoo, 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 boodoo. I want to get in on that too, right? And then once they've kind of provided value here and they've kind of, uh, you know, made friends or, or, or maybe earned tokens from writing this story, right? Something is going to happen where this, this ephemeral throwaway account is sort of important to them now, right? It wasn't important to them up front. If we would have the ephemeral account wasn't important to them up front, right? 
at first, if we would have just given them the seed phrase and thrown them at them uh, before they see anything, it's it's going to turn them off. It's going to be a huge onboarding. But let's let's show them the app first. Let's show them the people interacting with this story. Let's let's get them in and let them interact also, right? We'll pay for the gas. We'll we'll pay the onboarding a little bit there, right? Let's let them write the story too. And then once they've contributed, once this ephemeral accounts becomes valuable to them, then they're much easier to educate on, okay, this ephemeral account is not a good idea. Let's let's sweep uh your your tokens. Let's let's make a a final like event on that on that using that account toward a new you know protected account that says you know i swept here this is this is my new account and then the front end can kind of like parse both of those and say like this was their ephemeral account now this is their good account so everything that they did with their ephemeral account we can just consider this new account and the and the front end can do kind of this trick here where it kind of shows this this person although it's interacting through a proxy is this person and you could say the same thing with the identity like this this identity is also this ephemeral identity and we can kind of connect them right at the front end when we display it and it just makes it a lot easier to to teach someone about these uh blockchain pieces after it's protecting something not right up front so uh yeah, and, and then kind of as we've built this narrative, maybe we've made some friends here. Uh, same thing that's happening with MetaConnect. We see that like we've, we've made these friends with this ephemeral account. So we already have made a perfect, perfectly good transition to like an M of N social recovery type thing, right? So let's say we deploy an identity contract and then we can just say, okay, this guy, this guy, and this guy, they're, they're my buddies. If I have a problem or I lose my key, let me let me set up social recovery with them, which is a huge issue right now with people losing keys and and uh, kind of with my crypto and MetaMask. They have to have these really scary warnings for good reasons because people are losing their keys. We just we need to do a better job as DApp developers to kind of get people into the space and get them understanding what it means to lose a private key and and get some in social recovery and stuff like that set up for the user and get them to the point where they're incentivized to be educated. And then the, the stuff like my crypto and MetaMask doesn't need to be as scary because it's actually a really awesome thing to have that like in your browser, uh, you know, to have that uh, Chrome extension ready to go, right? It's really cool stuff. So then uh, what, are, what are our other final thoughts and discussion? So one thing is Sybil resistance. It's sort of like as soon as I sell someone on the idea of, oh, yeah, well, you know, you can use this cool cryptography trick to pay for the gas for the for your users. But you need to think about civil resistance up front and it's going to be different for every single dApp. So for my music service, I made this silly uh, example app called Ether Jam Jam, where you uh, submit songs and then people can like like your songs. If you. Uh, have some kind of social login system already, that's perfect, right? That's perfect civil resistance. I can just say, okay, log in, log in with Spotify. And if you have a valid Spotify token, I can just take that and say, okay, this person has a valid Spotify token. I'm going to pay for their gas. Like that's good enough. They're not attacking. And and maybe they still could and stuff like that. Like we're, we're going to have to be smart about this, but generally you just need uh, oh, that was the other piece. I'm going to have to patch it together. You just need some kind of civil resistance. Okay, and then what is the last piece? Uh, replay attacks. So this is something that I'll probably talk about more in my workshop, and let me show that right now. If you're going to DevCon, find me in Prague, October 31st, 3.30 p.m. in the colloquial colloquio room. I don't, I don't know. It's, uh... I'm bad at pronouncing things. Uh, but basically, uh, 3.30 p.m., we will be running through Clevis and Apparatus, and we're going to be building out a meta transaction uh, setup just like this. So any questions you have, bring your machine, and let's uh, let's hack on meta transactions. But finally, kind of one thing that we'll discuss there is how we have that nonce in there for replay protection. We've kind of figured out some really neat things we can do by actually allowing replay with like token subscriptions and, and stuff like that where... This this meta transaction that you push to this relayer network can actually be stored on the relayer network, and the relayer can resubmit it as it becomes valid again. And we can use a timestamp to determine 
when it becomes valid again. So then you can have like a subscription system that's like set it and forget it. But we'll talk about that later. Thanks for keeping up with meta transactions. Let's let's build a better user experience. Let's let's get the user into the app first. Let's let them use it and then kind of educate them uh, out on on crypto as they've uh, as they're incentivized to do so. Thank you. Uh, hit me up on Twitter if you have any questions. Austin Griffith. Uh, let's build.